Good evening. Welcome to the Sheikh Mystery Series. So tonight we are continuing the topic that we started a couple of weeks ago about how Avedis Hashem will be like when Mashiach comes, how our service of Hashem will, will, will look like. So in the previous weeks we talked about um, how the study of Torah, learning Torah, how, how that's going to be. Last week we spoke about uh, the knowledge of Hashem and uh, teaching each other what, that, what, that, what that's going to be like. So we know that the world stands on three pillars, Torah, Avodon, and Gemilas Chasadim. So we discussed last two weeks primarily the concept of Torah. And this week we're going to focus on the other pillar that the world stands on, which is Gemilas Chasadim. Tzedakah and Gemilas Chasadim. So we'll begin over here with the Gemara and Shabbos, Kufnan Aleph Amad Aleph, 151a. Now over here we'll see in this Gemara, in this passage of the Talmud, that it would seem that, at least according to one opinion, when Mashiach will come, there will no longer be tzedakah. We will no longer give tzedakah anymore. And we'll see why. So we see it it's on the last, uh, through to the last word on the line, Vitania was taught in Abraisa, Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar Oimer. Rabbi Shimon, son of Elazar, said, Asei sha'ata moitzei, do, do what Rashi says, Asei tzedaka, do tzedaka, give tzedaka. Ad sha'at samoitzei, while you can still find, says Rashi, l'mi lasais, to whom to give tzedaka. Umatzei l'cha, and while you still have money. V'oidcha biyadecha, and it's still in your hands. Meaning to say, Rashi says, While you still have power before you pass away. And likewise, Shloyma HaMelech, King Solomon said in his wisdom, Remember your creator in the, day, in the days of your youth. Before the days of evil come upon you. What does that refer to? That refers to the days of old age. And then Shleim HaMelech continues, King Solomon concludes, Years will come in which he will say, I have no desire. What does that mean? These refer, these refer to the days of Mashiach. In the days of Mashiach, there will be no schus. What does that mean, Rashi? says, There will be nothing to become meritorious through. Everyone will be rich. There will be no way to uh, have a schus by giving tzedakah because everyone will be rich. Everyone will be wealthy. And there will be no opportunity also to sin. Says Rashi, Meaning to be strong of heart and to hold your hand back. In other words, to withhold from giving staka. So in other words, Yabba Shimon ben Elazar is saying in this verse, and the way he's interpreting also what Shlema HaMelech said, is when Mashiach will come, everyone will be wealthy, and it won't be possible to uh, give tzedakah anymore. No one will need tzedakah. However, the Gemara, uh, the Gemara points out, de Shmuel. however, this is in conflict with Shmuel, the Omar Shmuel, Shmuel says, Ein bein ha'ilam hazel li meisa mashiach ala shibud malchi is bulvad. Shmuel's of the opinion, famous opinion, quoted many, many places in Shas, that the only difference between this world and the world to come, and the times of Mashiach, sorry, is the, literally the subjugation of governments. In other words, when Mashiach will come, the Jewish people, we will be under the reign of Mashiach, and will no longer be under other nations, other kingdoms. But as far as the rest of the way the world's going to work, it's going to be the same. Shanamar, and he quotes the, the Pasuk that says, Kilo yechdal It says, there will never cease to be a poor man in the earth. In other words, Shmuel is understanding that literally that even after Mashiach comes, there will still be poor people. And therefore, it will still be possible to give tzedakah. Okay. So now, just to point out over here. So it seems that, that there's a dispute over here in the Gemara. What can happen when Mashiach comes? Will there still be poor people? And we'll still be able to give it tzedakah, or maybe not. So, there's a, 
Um, the Rebbe spoke at, at length in many uh, occasions that even according to the opinion of Shmuel, it's the Rambam uh, Paskins like. So the Rambam himself indicates that um, there will come a further era in the times of Mashiach when there will, when miracles will occur, and the nature of the world will change. So, meaning to say that eventually the everyone will become wealthy, and even according to the opinion of Shmuel, seemingly. There will come a time when it will no longer be possible to fulfill the mitzvah tzedakah, since everyone will have everything they need. And so, so the dispute over here is only regarding the initial stage, the initial uh, era when Mashiach comes. But afterwards, everyone is of the everyone agrees that eventually the world will change and it will no longer be able will no longer be able to fulfill the mitzvah tzedakah. Okay, so so we have a few questions over here. So let's begin with question number one. Question number one is that we know the Rambam says in his in his introduction to Sefer HaMitzvahs, to the book of mitzvahs, that the only mitzvahs that are counted in the Taryag mitzvahs, in the 613 mitzvahs, are mitzvahs that apply for all generations. Apply for all generations. A mitzvah that was only a temporary mitzvah. Is not is not considered one of the 613 mitzvahs. So let's take for example, there was a mitzvah that the Jewish people had in the midbar not to leave the mun, the right, the mun that came from heaven. They weren't allowed to uh, leave it till the next day, right? That's not included in the in the Tayag mitzvahs, in the 613 mitzvahs, because that was a, a mitzvah that was only for that generation, only for that time, and uh, so it's not applicable to all generations. So the question is, tzedakah is in fact one of the 613 mitzvahs. I believe definitely by the Rambam. The Rambam includes it in one of the 613 mitzvahs. And I believe also many of the other um, commentators who enumerate the 613 mitzvahs. So if when Mashiach will come, we'll no longer fulfill the mitzvah of tzedakah. So why is it one of the 613 mitzvahs? That's our first question. So I believe the answer is a very simple answer. And the Rambam himself, in his Sefer HaMitzvahs, in a number of places, the Rambam gives the answer to this question. So, this is just one example. This is Mitzvah Sasei Kuf Pezayin, Mitzvah Sasei, the Positive Commandment 187. So, over there, the Rambam um, uh, says that the mitzvah, there's a Mitzvah to... Um, Wipe out the seven nations, right? The seven nations that inhabited the land of Eretz, the land of um, Canaan, meaning Eretz Yisrael. The Jewish people, they had to wipe them out, meaning either they had to accept the Shavu Mitzvah Bnei Noach, and they had to uh, what do you call it, to sort of accept to be, so to say, second class, or they were, or they were to be killed out. Now, the Rambam asks that. Question is like this: Maybe a person will think this is a mitzvah that doesn't apply for all generations. Says the seven nations there have already been destroyed. He said you could only ha- make that mistake if you haven't correctly understood the concept of something which applies for all generations. It says a command that is fulfilled when you when you reach its end, meaning when you fulfill the commandment, but it's not dependent on, on any specific time. That's not considered something that's not applicable for, for all generations. It says this mitzvah applies in any time, in any generation, when you'll have the possibility to fulfill that mitzvah. So he goes on. I'm not going to read all of everything that he says over here. And, but the point is, he say the the point that Rambam is saying is, is as follows. He's saying the mitzvah to annihilate the, the annihilate the seven nations that applies in all generations. And any generation, when you will find the seven nations, so then you have a mitzvah to wipe them out. 
Now, it's possible that they have already been annihilated, so we've already done the job. But theoretically speaking, theoretically speaking, right, if this generation, Mashiach will come, right, and there'll be the seven nations, we'll find one of the seven nations. So there'll be a mitzvah to wipe out one of the seven nations. So in other words, when we say that a mitzvah uh, has to apply for all generations, it means that theoretically speaking, if you have the opportunity to fulfill that mitzvah, so then there's a mitzvah to fulfill it. He says the same thing applies to wiping out Amalek. Amalek. What happens once we wipe uh, out Amalek? Or what happens in this generation? We don't know who Amalek is. Does that mean that we don't have a mitzvah to wipe out Amalek today? No, there's a mitzvah to wipe out Amalek today. Happens to be we don't know who Amalek is. Or after Mashiach comes, we'll already, we will wipe out Amalek and then we finish the job. But still, the mitzvah is still applies in all generations. Because the mitzvah is, if you have the opportunity to fulfill that mitzvah, then you have to fulfill it. It doesn't mean that you'll, that you'll always have that opportunity. So that's, this is the, 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 the foundation that the Rambam um, lays down over here. That when we say that a mitzvah has to apply in all generations, what it means is not that in any given day you it has to be possible literally to fulfill that mitzvah. It means that in every single day you have a mitzvah that if you have that opportunity, you have to fulfill it. In other words, let's say today the mun will fall from heaven. Let's say today it will be mun that will fall, or will fall from heaven. Is that will, will there be a mitzvah that you can't, will there be a, an, an, uh, an iser, a prohibition that you can't leave it to the next morning? No, right? That was a mitzvah that only applied in the desert, when they had mun in the desert. It's not a, that any time mun falls from heaven, you can't leave it till the morning. That's not what, that's not what the mitzvah is. The mitzvah was for that generation. It was only specifically for that time. So the same thing we, we could also apply to tzedakah. What is the mitzvah of tzedakah? The mitzvah of tzedakah is whenever you see a, a person who is in need of something, so you have to provide them with their need. That's what the mitzvah tzedakah is. Usually, it's usually in a monetary sense. So now, even when Mashiach will come, so if you'll find a poor man, there will be a mitzvah to give him tzedakah. Now, it happens to be you won't find a poor man because we'll all be wealthy. We'll all, we'll, we will all have all our needs. But the mitzvah of tzedakah still applies in a theoretical sense, meaning if you will find a poor man at the time of Mashiach, there will still be a mitzvah to give him tzedakah. So the, the answer seems is, is pretty straight, straightforward. So the mitzvah of tzedakah is a mitzvah that applies in all generations, even when Mashiach comes, whenever you have that opportunity. So the real question is, it's really a deeper question, that, as, I, as we mentioned before, the Mishnah in, in the beginning of Avay says, that al shleishadvarim ha'ilam aymed, the world stands on three things, three pillars: Torah, Avoida, and gemilas chasadim. Right, the study of Torah, Avoida, which refers to karbanes, and gemilas chasadim, acts of loving kindness, which usually, primarily, applies to uh, apply uh, refers to the mitzvah of tzaka. So, how could it be that when Mashiach will come? We won't have that amud. We won't have that pillar. What, when Mashiach will come, suddenly the world is going to be lacking the pillar of Gemilas Chasadim. That seems that seems to be completely antithetical to the whole concept of Mashiach. Mashiach is a time when we'll be able to fulfill all the mitzvahs properly. So how will it be possible to even say that when Mashiach will come, suddenly the the whole pillar that the world, one of the three pillars that the world stands on, won't actually won't, won't be actualized. Will only exist in some theoretical sense. So we have to we have to we have to uh, we have to come onto some other answers over here. So we'll, we'll explore three different answers of how to answer this question. So the first answer we have over here is from the Chassam Soifer, of Meisha Soifer. So in his uh, commentary on Chumash, Parshas Bichu Kaisai. So he uh, he comments on this idea, starting on the third line. He says. He says, we know, it says the world stands on these three pillars. So now the Chassam Sefer points out another interesting thing. What does Avodah refer to? Avodah refers to the service of Karbanes. Karbanes, that's what it refers to specifically. Yeah, There is a concept of davening also that it's Avodah, but 
Avoida specifically refers to Kabonis. So nowadays, we don't have a base of Mikdash till Mashiach comes. So how do we have the pillar, the Umud of Avoida? Oh, so he says, which is Kabonis. So it says the Chsam Soifer, Vizman Ain Lonu Avoida. Nowadays, we don't have Avoida, Virak, Al Yidei Limud HaToyram, Anu Yechaylam, Lekayim Gam HaAvoida. How are we able to fulfill? How are we be able? How are we able to f- uh, sustain the pillar of avoda? It's also through the study of Torah. How so? They call her Isaac b'Teiras Oila Kilu Hikriv Oila. Our sages say whoever involves himself in the study of a carbon Oila, it's considered as if he brought a carbon Oila. Uve Chatas Kilu Hikriv Chatas, and if a person studies the law of Chatas. Of a carbon chatos, it's as if he brought a carbon chatos. V'chein be'inach, the same applies to all the other carbonis. Avol hagemilus chasodim hachiyuv aleinu lasis bepoil. However, nowadays we have to do gemilus chasodim in the physical, simple sense. We actually have to give uh, give money to each other and 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 uh, do gemilus chasodim in the literal physical sense, not to study about it. So in other words, nowadays we're not doing avodah in the regular sense. How we how are we doing avodah? We're doing avodah through study of Torah. However, in the time to come of Mashiach, then the world will be fixed. The world will be will be rectified. Then the avodah will be bepoil. Meaning, then we'll have kabbanis. But we won't need because each man will be under his his vineyard and under his uh, fig tree. Everyone will know Hashem from smallest to greatest. No man will, will need his friend. And, and death will be swallowed up forever. So then we'll fulfill Gemilus Chasadim through study of Torah as well. The Kol Ha'Oisik, the Parsha Hahu. Um, yeah, that whoever is involved in that Parsha, so he will, right? He, he will. It will be considered as if he is giving Gemilus Chasadim. So basically, what the Chasam Sefer is saying is a very interesting thing. Just like nowadays. How do we fulfill Avoida? How do we do Karbanais through study of Torah? When Mashiach will come, how will we gi- how will we give Gemilas Chasadim? We, no one will need Gemilas Chasadim. No one, no one will need Staka. Through studying about Gemilas Chasadim, through learning about Gemilas Chasadim, will be as if we gave Gemilas Chasadim. So the Chassam Sefer is saying that we will have also a practical way of fulfilling Gemilas Chasadim when Mashiach comes through studying Torah. Okay, so that's one that's one uh, approach. Now we'll see. Another approach from the Rebbe, this is from uh, the Sikh of Shabbos Parshish Kisavi Tavshin Memtes, 1989. So, this is, the Rebbe brought it uh, sort of uh, on just uh, by the way, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the Fabrengen. The Rebbe asks, The Rebbe asks, How are we going to fulfill the mitzvah of tzedakah when Mashiach comes, after the prophecy is fulfilled that there will no longer be poor men, how will we fulfill the mitzvah of Tzedakah? Yeshlaim says the Rebbe, the Shekiv and Shigam la Asilava Yechiluk Ben Tanim Lagdoilam. So what did we learn last week? That even when Mashiach comes, there will be still differences between there will be people who are great and people who are small. Kameshikasav Kulam Yedu Aisi Kulam Beshavet. As it says that everyone will know me, everyone equally will know Hashem, but at the same time, they will still be small and great. So therefore, therefore, it will still be possible for those who are great to give tzedaka to those who are small. In other words, what the Rebbe is saying is that the tzedaka will be given in a spiritual sense. So they're stuck in the physical sense, but then there's spiritual stuck as well. It brings to mind the, that uh, 
famous uh, Yechidus, private audience that the Mashpir of Nissen Nemenov from, from France, from Bunois, had with the Rebbe. So after the Rebbe started Mifzah Tefillin, the Tefillin campaign, so this was a whole novel idea to the, some of the older Chassidim, the that Bachem Yeshiva should go out and they should um, go out into the streets of New York or the streets of Paris and offer Jews to put, a tf- to put on Tefillin with them. And uh, Reb Nissen, Reb Nissen Emin of the, the Mashpi of the Yeshiva was concerned that this would take away from the Bachrim's own personal Avoida, Avoida Sashem. What about the Bachrim uh, putting their efforts into their own learning and their own davening? And so the Rebbe told Reb Nissen that the Alter Rebbe writes in Torah Oyer that the Pasuk says, Tzedakah Tereimim Goy. Says that when a person gives tzedakah, it elevates the nation. Which means when a person gives tzedakah, nasa moichay velibay zakim elafamim kacha. When a person studies Torah, his mind and heart become purified a thousand times fold. So, and the Rebbe continued. The Rebbe told him, "Listen, that means that if a so the Alter Rebbe was talking about physical tzedakah, but the same thing also applies to a spiritual tzedakah." When a young bocher goes over to a Jew who's not affiliated and doesn't yet know about the mitzvah, about the importance of putting on tefillin, and he gives him the opportunity to put on tefillin, he's doing tzedakah. He's giving him a spiritual tzedakah. Spiritual tzedakah, giving, giving him the opportunity to do a mitzvah, Hashem's mitzvah. So the rabbi told Rav Nissen that the, the, the Bochum's minds will become, will become, yeah, purified, thousand times full. Something that will take them a half hour, a five hundred hours to learn, it'll take them a half hour to learn. Something that will take a thousand hours to learn, they'll be able to learn in one hour. So in other words, the concept of tzedakah, the Rebbe is saying a similar thing when Mashiach will come, will be a spiritual tzedakah. Spiritual tzedakah, there'll be people who are, who are, who are called gedolim, who are great, even when Mashiach comes, and people who are ketanim. However, the Rebbe points out, Moving she'ena kavana lektana mamash. Obviously, when we're talking about people who are small, it's all, it's in a relative sense, relatively speaking. It means that since they're receiving something from someone else, so therefore we, we, we refer to them as people who are small. But it's not that they're literally small. Because you know, when Mashiach will come, everybody will know Hashem and everybody will be on a much greater level than they are nowadays. So an, exa- an example of this idea, how you could have someone who even though he's very great, like we'll all be when Mashiach comes, nevertheless, in a certain sense, or at a certain moment, he needs tzedakah, so to say, from someone else. Interesting example. Omru Chazal, our sages say, Ki koi Rebbe baha mesechta li teshay li b'mesechta achrisi. Our sages say, when Rebbe is involved in this mesechta, in this tractate of the Talmud, don't ask him about a different mesechta. So what do you see from that? Kalaimai, what you see from this is the fault. Aval We're talking about a true a true sage. Adi Rabbeinu HaKadosh. We're talking about the holy Rabbi Yehuda HaNasi. Besadeh HaMishnayis, the one who organized the Mishnayis, the greatest of the great. Rabbiyah, Rabbi Yishia, Shasidu HaBraisois. Rabbiyah, Rabbi Yishia, who organized the Braisois. So how you bekiyum b'chol masechtes. Which obviously... They were fluent in all mesechtes of, uh, of Shas. Nevertheless, when they were involved in one mesechta, says the Gemara that you shouldn't ask them about a different mesechta. On the other hand, the Yosef Rabbi Amiti, since he's a true Rebbe, Hare Kishaba as Shaila ben Gela Maisa b'Pail Hare Zachray Shaloi Lo Hare Samaisa Shayasim. So now, what's going to happen? Rebbe is involved in this Masechta, but now someone comes and asks him a practical halachic shayla. So now it's his responsibility. He has to take himself out of the Masechta he's involved in, so to say, and find out the answer and answer the person who's asking him this, this practical halachic question that's relevant right now. So what do you do? He's, he's involved in another Masechta. His mind is somewhere else. So, so what's the Eitzah? What do you do? What, what does this Rebbe do? He asks someone who's involved in 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 the in in that in that subject in which the Shaila was asked, in which the halachic question was asked. 
And he gives over the halacha in the name of the person who told him. So what follows? So it comes out that when Rebbe is involved in this Masechta, and he has to figure out a certain thing. At that moment, Rebbe is small. So that's the idea. So the Rebbe is just giving an example of how you can have the greatest of the great, but at a certain moment, or at a certain, in, a, in a certain situation, he should still need the help of someone else. Right, like Rebbe, when he's involved in one mesechta, he now he needs to answer a practical halachic shaila about uh, another subject, so he has to ask someone else at that moment, since his mind is somewhere else, even though he's fluent in, ever, in everything. So a similar thing when Mashiach will come, even though we'll all be great, we'll all know Hashem, and our knowledge of Torah and everything will be on a much greater level, nevertheless, it will still be possible to, for, to give tzedakah and to receive tzedakah from someone else, in a spiritual sense, spiritual tzedakah. Okay, so that's the second answer, a second way of explaining how we will have tzedakah when Mashiach comes. Okay, this third answer is unbelievable answer. This is, again, the Rebbe just mentioned this at the end of a sicha in Chai Elo Tess, 18th of Elo, 1979. So the Rebbe concluded the sicha, the Rebbe was talking about giving tzedakah, the Rebbe says that during the Der Hanhaga, that min zeicha zayin bekolid sim kiyum hayud from loyia bacha avian, that through acting in a way of giving tzedakah, will merit the fulfillment of the prophecy that there will no longer be any poor men. V'yesh loymer as becholze that their inyan from gemilach chasadim oich dan zayin, despite the fact that the, that there will no longer be any poor people, nevertheless there will still be the concept of Gemilas Chasadim. So here the Rebbe is going to say not, like the Chassam Saif, we said, not through studying about Gemilas Chasadim, not through a spiritual Gemilas Chasadim, but through a regular, simple Gemilas Chasadim. So why? Why will we, how and why will there be Gemilas Chasadim? Says the Rebbe, need vile the Oshu vet muzin on kumitsu Gemilas Chasadim. It's not because the wealthy man will need gemilas chasadim. He won't need a loan. He won't need money. But demult is a doch an an oni by because if he'll need money, so at that moment, at that time, in that instant, so he's considered poor. No, why will it be gemilas chasadim? We'll give gemilas chasadim just in order that we should have the pillar of gemilas chasadim. <coughs> Because Gemilus Chasadim is one of the three pillars on which the world stands. And it should happen immediately. So the Rebbe is saying a, an amazing thing. That when Mashiach will come, we'll still give Gemilus Chasadim to each other. But not because we'll need to give Gemilus Chasadim to each other. Just in order to, in order to have this pillar. In order to have the pillar of Gemilus Chasadim. So... Right, so that's why we'll give each other uh, money. So it, it almost seems like ridiculous, almost, right? It almost seems funny that we're just going to be giving each other money and, and loaning, loaning each other money just in order to fulfill it. So the truth is that, first of all, there is a story that the Friedrich Rebbe tells, and the Rebbe also quotes the story in, in, in letters, in a letter, in the Gwiskodesh, the Rebbe's letters, a, a similar story that happened... Obviously, before the before the coming of Mashiach, so it's it's in Igros Kodesh in Chelak Zion, um, the volume seven over here. It's it's a letter um, written to um, the Chevra Gemilas Chasadim, the um, Rabbi Avram uh, Sharfstein, Rabbi Yechon and Gordon, who had a gemach, they had a free loan society, and uh, in the letter, the Rebbe quote, uh, quotes a story from the Friedrich Rebbe about the, the greatness of the mitzvah of Gemilas Chasadim. He tells the story how there was a simple um, store owner in the city of Palotsk. His name was Rabbi Yisrael. Rabbi Yisrael. In the city of Palotsk, he was the chassid of the Tzemach Tzedek. And he came to Lubavitch on Shabbos Parshas Vayera. One year. And he heard a mimer from the Tzemach Tzedek. He heard a mimer chassidus that 
Avram, the Tzemach Sedek spoke in the mind with it. Avram Avinu, he says, he was a nadiv begufei b'mamayna yuvenafshay. He was generous with his, both with his body, his money, and his soul. And the Tzemach Sedek then explained how Avram Avinu, although he was a person of, of flesh and blood down here in this world, he, so to say, took the place of the sphere of chesed of Atzilos. I mean, Hashem's sphere of chesed, Avraham Avinu's chesed was so great that it replaced the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, 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 what the sphere of chesed, uh, Hashem's chesed uh, does. The Rebbe also mentions this in, in Hayoim Yom. And uh, so the Tzemach Sadiq said in the mind, so you can understand that Avraham Avinu was even higher than the sphere of chesed of Atzil. So right? if he replaced it, he was on a higher level. And so Rabbi Yisrael is a simple Jew. He didn't understand like the whole mimer that the Tzemach Sadek said, but those couple words he grasped. And so he came home and he told it over by Echsidah Shafabrengen. Echsidah got together and uh, and then he went off to his business. So now, even though he didn't need any money, but he went over to his friend, Reb Nachman, um, we also had another story, and he asked him for uh, um, he asked him for a loan because he wanted to be Mizakeh Reb Nachman with a loan. And then also he went to another uh, went to another st- uh, store owner, right? Um, so other store owners because they also heard about them this unbelievable mile of Gemilas Chasadim. So each one, the, the whole day, they were borrowing money from each other in order to fulfill the the the, the of Gemilas Chasadim. So when Rabbi Yisrael came back to Lubavitch, the Tzemach Sedek called him and he asked him about what he was doing. And uh, later, the Rebbe Maharash asked the Tzemach Sedek, what did he see on Rabbi Yisrael? Why did he call him over and ask him what he was doing? So the Tzemach Sedek answered that he saw on Rabbi Yisrael, the, 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 the store owner, he saw in Omud Oyer of Chesed Atzilos. He said he saw a pillar of light of Chesed of Atzilos. In other words, you see what, uh, what this uh, Rabbi Yisrael, what he accomplished by uh, just giving to uh, Gemilus Chasadim, just, you know, just what we, see, what we call Stamazai, just in order, in, order, in order to fulfill the concept of Gemilus Chasadim. So this is like a, a main, this is like a taste of the way we're going to give Gemilus Chasadim when Mashiach comes. So, I think over here in the footnote over here, the Rebbe mentions the Medrash about Kesef Talvas Ami is, in, is uh, in order to answer Chesed of Emes Mani and Seru. If I'm not mistaken, that's the famous Medrash that um, Dovin HaMelech asked uh, Hashem that why, did, why does Hashem make poor people? Why does he make that for there should be poor people um, in order uh, what, it, it, there should be poor people? Everybody, Hashem should provide for everybody. Why is it that some people are poor? So what Hashem answered was that Chesed the Emes Man Yin Now, if not for the fact that there were that there was, that there are poor people, so who's going to do Chesed? Who's going to do Chesed? In other words, the purpose of the existence of poverty is really in order that the, those who have the money, those who are wealthy, they should be able to give tzedakah. So, what it comes down is a very interesting thing. That really the ultimate goal is. It's not, you think of tzedakah, what's the, who, who, who's, what's the purpose of tzedakah, right? So, just at face value, the purpose is to provide for the needs of those who don't have, right? Those who don't have the money, those who don't have the, the means. But in a deeper sense, the Bedrus is teaching us, if that were the case, so Hashem could provide for them. Right? But Hashem needs us to provide for, for, other, for, for, the, for poor people. So in a deeply sense, the purpose of the reason why Hashem creates poverty is in order to give the aschus to those who do have the money, to the rich, that they should be able to provide for the poor. So what's going to happen when Mashiach will come? What's going to happen when Mashiach will come is that we're going to give tzedakah without people being poor. We'll do gimilas we'll do gimilas chasadim, more correctly stated. We'll do gimilas chasadim without people having to be poor. In other words, this is really touching on a whole deeper understanding of the nature of life when Mashiach comes. 
See, the world before Mashiach comes, we spoke about this also two weeks ago in regard to learning Torah. This fits with the general theme of Mashiach. This is the world now before Mashiach is a world of Birurim. Basically, just to maybe translate like that in, 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 in a simple way, it's about fixing problems. About fixing problems. Now, we have a world that has issues, it has problems, there's good, there's evil, right? There is, there is, uh, uh, both, in, both in the world at large and personally, you have an Efsha Bahamas, and even as we spoke two weeks ago, in, in Torah itself, there's lack of clarity, and we have to fix the problems. Right, and that's what our whole goal is. That's our whole motivation is to fix problems. Right, in other words, the world is, so to say, not a dwelling place for Hashem, and we have to change it. We have to transform it and make it a dwelling place for Hashem. When Mashiach will come, that's going to be done already. We've, we've, we'll already have fixed all the problems. Right, there will be no poor people. There will be no problems anymore that we have to fix. So, so, so what's going to be the nature of Avodah Hashem when Mashiach comes? What's going to be, what, what are we going to be accomplishing? So the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, in a Geras HaKodesh, what he calls it is Liyachid Yehudim, which basically means to reach a higher level of Kedusha, a higher level of holiness. So in other words, we're going to do Torah Mitzvah not to fix a problem, not, not, to, not because the world is not a dwelling place for Hashem and now we have to transform it and make it into a dwelling place for Hashem. Rather, we're just, the purpose is, 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 is going to be Aliyah, to elevate the world to a higher level. So a similar thing also is in regard to Tzedakah and Gemilas Chassadim. So nowadays, Tzedakah and Gemilas Chassadim, the nature is that there's a problem. There's people who are poor, people don't have needs, right? And we have to fix the problem. Uh, those who have money, we have to give Tzedakah, they have to give Gemilas Chassadim in order that people should have what they need. Because that's the nature of the time of Golas. That's the nature of the world before the coming of Mashiach. After Mashiach will come, so we won't be giving Gemilas Chassadim or Tzedakah because we're looking to fix a problem because there's poor people that don't have. We're going to be giving it because that's the, because like the Rebbe says, that's the Ummah that the world stands on. In other words, Hashem, what Hashem wants is that people should give. People should give to each other. That's what Gemilas Chassadim is about. So nowadays, why, why do people give? Because someone else is lacking. There's a deficiency. You need to fill it. Someone else is lacking. When Mashiach will come, we'll give just because the goal is to give. It's not going to be to give in order to fix a problem. So it, so just trying to bring out over here that you could, you could, uh, at first glance, it seems as if the Rebbe is saying, okay, so Mashiach will come, we'll like find an excuse in order to give, in order to fulfill Gemilas Chasadim, right? We'll just do it because like, you know, there was an Indian, you know, there's a, there's this, this idea of giving Gemilas Chasadim. But the truth is, I think that would be a, a, a misunderstanding. The purpose of Gemilas Chasadim nowadays is the same purpose that of when Mashiach will come, which is that people should give. People should give to each other. Nowadays, in order for to create that possibility, so we have to create a situation where there's people who are lacking. When Mashiach will come, so we'll give with we'll give without creating that situation of people people lacking. We'll give just because of the concept of giving. And that's in general going to be the whole nature of the world when Mashiach comes, that we're going to be doing Torah mitzvahs. Torah, Vaidah, Gemilas Chasad, everything will just be just to reach a higher level of Kedushan, not in order to, to fix any problems. So just to recap over here. So, so we, we, we talked about different levels of how we're going to fulfill Tzedakah when Mashiach comes. So at a basic level we asked, so if there no, won't be any Tzedakah in the literal sense when Mashiach comes, so how is it one of the Tariag mitzvahs? So to that we answered because it's still a mitzvah in the theoretical sense, right? It, theoretically, if there would be, will be a poor person when Mashiach will come, there will be a mitzvah to give to him. So that's in a very basic level. Now on a deeper level, so how could it be that we're not actually going to give tzedakah uh, gminus chasadim? Seemingly, that, seemingly that's one of the pillars that the world stands on. So for that we had three answers. One was the chasam soifu that we'll learn about it. One was an answer from the rabbi that will fulfill the concept of tzedakah in a spiritual sense. We'll teach each other. There will still be a concept of tzedakah. And then we'll have the concept of gemilas chasadim that we'll just give gemilas chasadim to each other just in order to give. So we should merit that through uh, our giving tzedakah and our gemilas chasadim nowadays, so we should uh, merit to the time of Mashiach when we'll be able to fulfill this mitzvah just lishmach, just for the sake of giving, and everybody will have everything that they need. And there won't be anyone 
who is poor, and it should happen, take it from Yad Mamish immediately.